end we have we have display custom login errors from Julian. Um, yeah, better error messages in the login, like your account has been hasn't been validated or something like this. So some API changes, but it's in dev. Okay, now we can when you call validate user, you get a list of validation errors when the user is done. So you can you know why and you can display it. Then um, on the query database, if new tag is being added, an optimization in the in the management for tags, which is that it was doing lots of things with tags when deleting them, when updating them, it was deleting them and recreating them or reading some others. Now it's optimized. It's just doing what it needs to do. Um, makes content item ID available for the trace of admin. There was a case when content item ID could be null, so he handled that for the audit trail. Removing leftover code that prevented every spam filtered content item. So this didn't go for PR, so what is that? Um, from being persisted if spam was configured to be deleted. Okay, so yeah, just handle a configuration correctly. Prevented every spam filtered content item from being persisted. Ah, I see. Probably, yeah. Okay. Good. Good, 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 good. And these guys, they have some session at the netconf. Is that it, Janos? I saw some sessions. Session names for the FPGA, FGPA, whatever. Um, so that's Orchard 1, Orchard Core now. Nick working on GraphQL, but we'll have to drop it because, I mean, we can't ship it. What do you mean we can't ship it? Didn't you see that? Uh, who said? Um, I read the article, but I think was it Rustem who uh, sent a message? Maybe it was Rustem someone, someone else. Um, a link to the article about WordPress dropping React. So they had done their client in React, and they are just canceling the project, and they will start with another technology because they can't. Uh, use React, they will impose the Facebook patent issue on all their customers. And most of them will just say, no, I can't use WordPress because of this patent uh, issue. And GraphQL has the same patent issue. GraphQL has a patent issue? Well, it's different than uh, React. So React is, a, is, some, is some code and the technology is patented. Okay, it's open source, yeah. but if you use it, you say, oh, I can't, well, all my, um, you can't sue Facebook for patent reasons, whatever. Okay, you, you accept the terms that if you use GraphQL, uh, uh, Facebook can sue you, but you can't sue Facebook, something like that. Um, and well, not to refuse, but React. And GraphQL is, an, is not an API per se, but has a patent clause in the license, apparently, also. Uh, so, really? Yeah, so we have to look into it. Maybe they will change it if they see that everyone is dropping GraphQL and or React. But uh, I know WordPress, they made an article. Uh, have you got the article? Because that's kind of important. Yeah. WordPress, React. Um, so if that's the case, then maybe I'll look at something like the... Um, the new Open Standard 3 See? API. Matt Mullenweg, who created WordPress, who owns um, Automatic, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, a few years ago, a few years ago Matic used React as its basis of ground-up rewrite of WordPress.com called Calypso. So you see, they started um, a SPA application for WordPress based on the same server-side API, but using React, okay, for their client side. And they are like, well, 
we started a big project called Gutenberg and we are telling you that we'll drop every React thing from that and rewrite it completely. Huh. They haven't disclosed the technology we use. They have. They are still looking at the alternatives. Maybe they have done that, but I don't know yet. They're talking and, React, though. That yes, was, yes. That's because, massive because React was one of those... People started using React because AngularJS 2 sucks. Well, WordPress had a lot of work already based on React. Yeah. And they just say we have to redo with another technology. So the yeah, there alternative there is Preact, which does the same thing in the same API. And, uh, but maybe there will be also licensing issues. And uh, well, <clears throat> they will find something else. But the, the, I mean, they have to drop it because they will force it on their customers and they can't take the risk. I mean, they can, but their customers will just say, no, we can't because we can't use React. So we can't use WordPress. That's why they decided to. Apache has said it's no longer, no longer valid for the Apache license. So. Jeez. Yeah, okay. meaning you can't really something under Apache if you're using React. <laughs> not compatible. So it's not so, even compatible under and, and GraphQL, GraphQL might have the same issue. So I, I <laughs> Okay. I'll have a look into it. But GraphQL is nice. So maybe it's different. Maybe we don't care. Maybe I don't know. As I said, maybe it's a module. We don't, if we don't force, I don't know. We have to check. Well, There's I got mutations to... working, so it would be it would suck to drop it. Um, <laughs> something to look into, at least. Yeah. Well, I got so you can set up a site using GraphQL. So um... I don't know the. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I saw your your thing, but what's the point of setting up a site with GraphQL? Well, it start. Well, it starts all the way from the beginning, right? So your test when your test runs, it sets a site up and then it creates a blog, all through GraphQL, which is quite nice. But it means that the setup module uses the GraphQL, the API module, right? It it can use it, yes. It just registers stuff in, in types and the REST APIs module just just uses that. Yeah, well, you don't need GraphQL to do that. You can have a REST API. That... Well, GraphQL is one of the APIs that is supplied in the REST APIs module. So yeah, but... <laughs> GraphQL is, is useful for querying data. GraphQL is useful for both querying data and for mutations. That's part of the spec. Mutations, okay. Well, it's part of the spec. Is it better for this part of the spec compared to a single REST API? I'm not sure. I know there is a lot of value for data manipulation. For the rest, I'm not sure there's a lot of value, even though it's part of the spec. Well, so the, the approach I took was I wanted my tests to be able to set the site up um so i wanted to drive out graphql from the tests um after playing around with it and it seems to have worked a lot better from driving it through the tests by setting up the graphql by setting up the site through the tests using graphql and then creating a blog after the site is set up through graphql um like yeah it's it's much nicer i mean if you want me to show you it at some point nice, then I'll be... nicer than what uh well it's just a really nice way to set up stuff through you know in order to drive out the the graphql stuff but in the rest like, apis but is it nicer than calling the rest api directly to set up something so slash set up done... slash recipe uh i haven't implemented that yet for you the see? JSON api so uh and maybe the same thing, not just an API, just, yeah, I know. Ah, well. well, you know, it's GraphQL, so you have the option. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, Orchard 2, Orchard 2, yeah, I was mentioning that because it was at the top. Otherwise, so this is next branch, and Jean Thierry has been working on. On, on updating his PRs, versioning, version number to the breaking changes I made last week. Um, and that's it? No. Oh, no, because you rebased. So everything is like hiding these things. Um, change add query model if no query feature is enabled. I 
release must be a fix fixing something let me see so I renamed the repository Orchard Core for your knowledge if you go to Orchard 2 it will still work there is a permanent redirect from GitHub okay uh, issues and you say you fixed something which is closed so we'll just go there message whether it's agree okay p3 mb2 bg warning that's some specification i don't know mb margin bottom p3 i don't know um, then this is a branch actually not merged yet to rename media URL to asset URL. Um, and I think there is an issue on that. I will check later. This is master some changes. I will take it on the other, from the other side. Um, building Docker image. So Docker images issues last week I showed you. Uh, better documentation. I think I showed you too. Dating credits, um, adding open edict credits. So f yeah, fixing all the readmes to give credits to all the libraries we are using. Um, this is a fix from Jean Thierry that will uh, fix the fact that it will load all the components from every module instead of just the one from the module which were enabled. So just regression we had at some point. This is a fix for the media resizing if the query will will end with a dot something, dot JPEG, even if it's not if, if even if it wasn't requesting an image like in a query string, it will try to load the image. So that was wrong. Um, fix the log oh I did I did this Nick I assume you, you saw that we'll we'll revert it when we find the issue. Um, so because of the Docker images remember the issue I, I showed you the, the Docker images were were slow. Yeah I did see this. So I had to remove the console uh, from the program because it's conflicting with Docker. It's conflicting uh, with Docker. It's, it's something that I talked to the guys from Docker in the in the SPN team and they saw that um, already I'm not sure if it's .NET or Docker but if sometimes it's not always sometimes for some images the console is just so the way the VM works in Docker send, uses the console in a weird way like sometimes there is no console so it just send things and and it messes up with the hosted application so in this case, we will receive lots of carriage returns, lots of things on the console. So it will slow down the full VM because it was just That's looking at the console. Okay. And in our case, we will read the console. So we will be like trying to process all the things all the time. So yes. I just remove the console support right now. Uh, and at the same time, I put it in error for uh, a log and put the add console in the ease development, just to be sure we don't mess up with the console on the production and in Docker. Okay. Um, okay. So and that fixed all the Docker performance issues. Uh, then renaming repositories we are to Orchard Core, so documentation and everything. You get the new get feed also, just a logical name, readme, um, documentation here. Um, what is that? Is this is right. add routing. Thing. Add routing, yes, yeah, yeah. The idea was that if you create a modular app that is not using MVC, this add routing will not be called. But we use routing. So, so weird. We, I thought we had fixed this a long time ago. I don't know. I just found it. And I I put it now in this one modular collection huh. because it's necessary for our modular tenant router. Uh, and so strange. That worked now. 
um, so this is a PR where I rename a bundle to application so oh. the it's better so the idea is try to create a new modular application and you have to reference something called Orchard Core Bundle. No, you don't. You have to. You. I don't. Have what, what do you have to reference it currently? I I only reference Orchard Core dot modules dot MVC. Because we oui, yes, oh good. Because Orchard Core module MVC is a bundle that yes. also includes MVC. So in in the, but people who don't want to create an MVC app, they have to reference bundle. That's the scenario. If you just want to make a web API, modules for web APIs like microservices, then you need to reference, you don't want MVC, okay? And all the services that come with it. You just want, oh, I want a modular app. So right now you have to reference dot bundle. So I change it to dot application because it makes more sense. Like I want to be an application, a modular application. So, and by the way, I renamed uh, Orchard Core modules MVC, which is the M an MVC app, you see? Like it's a bundle. So now it's application MVC or application Nancy or application only if you don't want to rely on any other framework. So it's more consistent, I think. And more logical. When you do demos, they are like, what, what is a bundle? <laughs> I just want to make an app. Um, and, and then the discussion I had also with Nick offline. I haven't created PR yet. Um, this is for the, we have two modules to mark. We have two packages to mark a module, a module and a theme, a theme. They are called as module and as theme. And uh, what was I suggesting? Um, targets. Oh, to call them orchardcore.modules.targets and orchardcore.themes.targets just as marker packages to, because I think, it, so I should write it down. It's, Easy. Right now you say Orchard Core dot as modules. You reference this thing when you want your project to be a module, okay? Or as theme. And what I was suggesting is we reference something called Orchard Core dot modules module dot uh, targets. Because technically internally is just some targets, some build targets that will be added to your um, um, project. And the as thing, it talks to us because we are using Orchard to do as part or you know an aspect of something. But yeah, that's that's weird from people to see what does it mean as module. So that's something I, I, I think it's better. But right now I haven't done even a PR because there is no agreement on that. So not changing anything. So if people have opinions about namings or even better names from these ones, because maybe there are better names, it's just, just to mark something. And and the same way, so on should call dot application. So maybe we need also to um, also be consistent with that. So maybe should it be as application because we have as modular theme or should we have application dot targets? Or something a marker package because it's, yeah it's it's just altering the way the project you are doing is behaving as an modular application as a module as a theme yeah that's something I yeah targets module targets application targets theme that's also another solution i actually proposed it in the in the bug or in the pr but yeah so guys please chat and put some suggestions and comments or if you don't care about as module as theme uh, just have some feedback um so this one bundle resource fix is fixing resource oh yeah, yeah this one was huge because um, so the issue was that uh, between two tenants, we will not reuse the, the compiled views. And it was also impacting uh, the setup time like crazy. And oh, we detected it when 
when enabling a feature, it will take like five seconds instead of 100 milliseconds that it used to be. And we look into it and it's because during the new tenant, we will rebuild the views that we are about to, to display, which is slow, building arrays of view. And uh, so we found a regression in the code we are using when we migrated to 2.0 that that we are, we are not uh, reusing the, the compiled views. Uh, so we fixed it. And now, like it used to be, the setup is super fast again. And when you enable or disable a feature, it's instantaneous. So you, you don't even think that, no, it's, there must have been a bug, like the feature is not enabled, it was too fast, like 100 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds, something like that. It's not uh, visible. Uh, so now this fix again. So that, that was a good uh, good fix. Is this going to PR? Oh, it's, it's merged, I mean. Is it? Oh, yeah. On oh, master or dev? Master. I, Are you I using should... compiled views across tenants? No, it says, so, when a view is compiled, when a view is compiled dynamically, by reason, it is. Yeah, I've got we, it, I found it. We reuse it. We don't have a tenant, because the, the, the object that owns the cache of compiled views was, is done per um, MVC pipeline, okay? And because each tenant has its own MVC pipeline, each tenant had its own cache. It was using memory cache. In one dot star, there was an object we could override. I compiled cache something that that we could override, and we did. But when we migrated to zero, um, it was removed. So we just applied a a, a basic migration that was working, uh, and and they were using an internal memory cache. So we had to rewrite some, to copy paste some of these services, which are internal, to expose the memory cache or to make the memory cache static. So we can reuse the, the views across um, across the lens. And I filed a bug in MVC that has been assigned to me to create this service that will let us override the Razor view engine cache. Okay, that's what they do. I give them feedback and they say, okay, do it, do it. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, I think, yeah, so the PR is 999, the issue. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering if it, I couldn't, I couldn't find it, but I, I found it in the end. Yeah, see. Compile views. Yep, done. Um, so that, uh, reusing compiled views across the and this is what was merged. Okay, that's done. Yeah. Refactoring PO file localization. Uh, so I did some little changes on the, the on the project because I tried it. Not only did I try it, but I wrote some documentation about it. So this project, this package in the Orchard Code folder is not a module, it's a project, Orchard Core Localization Core. There is also an abstraction here uh, that lets you support PO files and uh, pluralization, two things, better pluralization than in Orchard 1, okay? Um, all the pluralization, whereas in Orchard 1, we use only the two forms pluralization, which works, works in only uh, a third of all the languages. And uh, so this can be used in ASP.NET Core and uh, ASP.NET Core MVC. This was uh, the work mostly done by uh, Lucas Bart, but we can't, can't work on it anymore because it's too, too busy. And uh, I finished it, I documented it, and I refactored it sometimes when the, the uh, well, based on the documentation I, I wrote and the samples I wrote, I was like, no, this is not right, we need something else. And I, I changed it, this is the this PR. And the documentation is here. I have a, a gist here. Um, It, and oh, and that's that's nice also. Let me let me show you. So I wrote it as a GIS because I shared it with the Microsoft documentation team. Uh, they will. Um, I, I wrote it. You see, it's configuring portable object location in ASP.NET Core. Nothing to do with Orchard. In Orchard, we have a module which uses this package and configures this package for Orchard. Configuring meaning um, defining where the localization files are and how they are named, and and things like this. Um, for Orchard. So it explains what a PO file is and uh, how to configure it in ASP.NET Core and, and, and how to use it. Okay. 
same thing we do all the time, and how to use a pluralization, how to define the plural, plural values. And you see here there are three forms. It's check. Um, it has three forms, and in Orchard 1, we only support two. And with Orchard, this one, you can have as many forms as you need. Sometimes there are five, four, six, seven forms different. And it will find the, the forms automatically. Okay, so this article will be on the Microsoft documentation uh, site to point to our repository. Right now it's just in my get, but then when it will be in NuGet, it will be uh, pointing to the NuGet one uh, for everyone to use it. Um, and I think that's cool because that's also why we do Orchard sure to have reusable components for uh, SPNet Core. Uh, next is I will do the same thing, but for um, resource management, because we also have an MVC resource management module that we use in Orchard. Okay. A package that we use in Orchard as a module. Um, that's it. Uh, that's why I made some changes on the API. And then um, Jean Thierry fixing liquid helpers, fixing route names, or improving. This is me. Um, Yes, I tried to publish everything on NuGet, and then I hit another blocker. Um, so I modify NuGet at feed to only have NuGet and Orchard Core right now on myget.org. Okay, this is a fallback feed in case we need to provide custom implementation which are not on NuGet. And right now we still have some. We have um, we have OpenIDict and we have ImageSharp. Uh, I changed this one because the image sharp guys they released their package on you get and they also changed the package name uh, but six labors I've never heard of that before it's, it's a company that uh, yeah, they own that um, and but right now I have this package version which is a pull request version so private build um, on our MyGet because I found an issue uh, when so when they ship so they shipped it correctly but they target 1.4 and they use a method on 1.4 that is still valid in 2.0 but doesn't exist oh, it's complicated um, ah, so uh, entity header value it's a class in Microsoft headers package okay uh, it's not really this package but it's something like that headers and this is a class list and it has a constructor that takes a string okay and this is in 1.4 targeting the net standard 1.4 okay and the version of this package is 1.2 but it targets the net standard okay now there is a new version microsoft.headers 2. Dot something 2.1 which targets net standard 2.0. Okay. Um, so image sharp depends on this one because it sets a header at some point. And it sets a header by saying new entity header value with a value string. Okay. Now, because we rely on ASP.NET Core 2.0, we also reference Microsoft header. 2.1 which targets 2.0 okay but because this one targets 1.4 that's fine um, that that it, it compiles okay it's api wise it compiles the issue is that in the 2.0 version the constructor with a string value doesn't exist anymore now it takes a string segment so excuse me uh, yeah. does does anyone see uh, what Sebastian just typed because pro pro probably it was a different screen or something. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I think that's good. Uh, yeah, I can see it. Okay, thank you. I can see it now. No, okay, good. So, in the 2.1 version, now it's accepting a strict segment. Um, so, API wise, it works because these, when they call that, um, no, it doesn't work anymore because now when they call that, uh, it, will, it will look for the constructor with a string, which doesn't exist. So the idea is that 
when they call that API wise, it will work because they can convert a string to a string segment. But when it run uh, at runtime, it will look for the, it, uh, this package was built to look for the constructor with a string. So it doesn't find it anymore. So then you get a missing version exception. So that's very nasty because you will get so the issues. So how did this happen? Because I thought that net, I no. thought that net standard 2.0 supports all Let's the methods see. that are on net standard 1.4. It's a breaking change. It's, it's then a why is it, why is it compiling? It's compiling because the string can be converted automatically to a string segment. But it won't find, because this one is, has been compiled like this, it won't find the string dynamically. What it should have done is, yes, can you can make a string segment, but please keep the string. Yes, exactly. I, I don't know if you're finding this, but I find, I'm finding the whole .NET standard compatibility story very, uh, very poor. So far, that's the only issue I've, I've found, but that's an issue. I so found the system net HTTP stuff to be a pain in the ass. Okay. Don't have enough experience. But yet, so what I did is that I created a PR on their thing and I did a multi-target because they didn't want to just switch to 2.0, even okay. though nobody's using a system web, well, IMS web, and that would have been fine. They wanted to keep the 1.4 in case. Uh, so I, I, I multi-targeted. So now their package is targeting 1.4 and 2.0. In the case of 2.0, uh, it's, it's um, <clears throat> well, it's the same code because it's still calling the string, but now each package for each target calls either this constructor or this one. But the code is the same. It's just multi-targeting. Um, and I'm waiting for them to publish it on, on, uh, on you get. So if I go image up. When, do you, when will they um, publish it, do you know? I ping them this morning. I, everything is ready. I even changed Travis. It's running the test on both targets it's beautiful uh, it's ready they just have to uh, to merge it so i ping them this morning maybe when he wakes up ah yeah <laughs> i have to wake up yeah, yeah. but i did that on the thursday but the build master I maybe, maybe forgot and uh, we'll see um yeah so maybe i will also put an issue on microsoft headers because that's an issue people will find it only on runtime that's bad um <clears throat> So that's it. This I want to merge. Um, here is Ants. Add query. And this I think Antoine so left a message for you on that pull request, by the way. Yeah, I know. I, that's what I said. I a comment on it. Yeah, maybe there is, there is an issue. I am fine. I'll have to, to look at it. That's why it's not merged. Uh, that's, that's it. And, and. Um, I've stuck someone. Uh, well, um, that's it for the code. Demos. Demos, demos, demos. I could show um, creating a site through GraphQL if you want. Is there any value? Well, not if it, not if we've got patent issues, then we can't do it. Do it, but um, no, it, it will just show a, a call to an API that set up something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you I see, that, there you go. We trust you. Nah, it's alright. You can have a look. At, you can look at the code. I want to see better APIs. Better APIs. I'm using GraphQL. I need to implement JSON API better. So. I want to see a, a full website just using the APIs. One day. Soon. One day soon, exactly. And that's why I'm using the site creation to set up a site through GraphQL, because that's yeah. the first thing that you do. People ask for it. Um, how is it called? Um, decoupled CMS. Exactly. Um, <clears> the <throat> to topics we have a uh, module names. Nick, only uh, Nick. Nick and Sipka have opinions. Just a room full of people without opinion. Oh, yes, this one. But I don't think that's related to the asset URL. Um, 
No, no, it's not related. It's just uh, testing the, this okay. branch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. So I will, I will do that. Um, that um, uh, topics, topics, the release. So I'm waiting for image sharp. Um, oh, also, what I did, uh, I didn't mention it to um, to um, Kevin and or to Sergio, and I think he's here. I think I saw him. Yes. Um, for now, because OpenID is not on NuGet, uh, and that will break the the development experience for Orchard CMS uh, if we shift it this way, I removed. I removed OpenID from the Orchard.CMS bundle um, so that when you set up a CMS, but we were not enabling the feature by default, so that's fine. But now when you reference the Orchard.CMS bundle, it won't try to get the OpenID module. The module is still in the solution, still works, so it can be referenced by the web app, uh, by any web app if we need it, but uh, it will require to have the NuGet config to point to our Orchard core feed that points to SPNet Contrib, or to point directly to SPNet Contrib. Uh, but for now, uh, if we release to NuGet, then we can release. We won't just have the OpenID uh, module uh, shipped um, with the CMS. That's it. It will be only in the development, the, the source code solution, uh, because it's not NuGet. And as soon as it's on NuGet, we can make it a dependency on Orchard.CMS. Uh, should upgrade, yeah, we can upgrade if we if we need. If it works, we don't need to upgrade. Or if there is a new thing that we know is better, we should upgrade. Um, this will change in the future. Yes, he's, he's, he's supposed to put it on you get sometime when he has time and when he's ready because it's this 2.0 branch that uh, that is only on my get right now. It's not on you get. Uh, so we need that to be on you get. If we want to be on you get, the other packages need to be on you get. That's why image sharp has to be on you get also. If it was just like a random NuGet package, I would put it on NuGet with a different name and, and will point to it, which I did, I think, for one. Uh, but but because it's not a random package and you will put it on NuGet, we'll just wait for him. Okay? People have done it for with us by the past. They have put our packages on NuGet because they wanted it on NuGet. And uh, then we reclaimed the names. If they had used different names, it would have been an issue. Uh, some people do that. That's fine. Um, that's it. Um, <clears throat> what else? So shipping on it, and also, uh, yeah, we need more documentation, <clears throat> like uh, getting started. Like it's good we have it on 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 yet, but how do you uh, set it up? I have already an article ready uh, to explain how to um, <clears throat> how to deploy, how to use, how to start an Android site. Okay, uh, how to deploy it, how to use it, but um, I, I we need something like getting started, which explains how to go through setup and explain how to use it. Like look at the uh, blog recipe, the agency recipe to explain the concepts, the general concepts, just to have an idea of how it works, to drive at least people to to try it. Uh, so we need something like that. That and I need the resource management article. Not really two um, articles, so we'll see. Um, that uh, I like the new theme on the project website. The new theme on the project website is the same almost as the theme from the agency recipe, which is part of Orchard Core. So <clears throat> yeah, that, that's a nice base theme. And uh, that's also why we took these ones because we hope that people will just reuse them and customize them for their own needs. And this is what we need for the new uh, Orchard website. Um, no, but it should be pretty easy to do it because it's just one file, one page, just a layout page. Such so that's how I did it is just, I created the site statically and just, change it to a layout, done, super easy. A layout and a content dash something, content dash page. Not really page, content dash landing page for Orchard Core, but that, that should be super easy to, to do. The nice thing also with this theme, a look at the, the credits, is that it's MIT, so you can just use it and distribute it. And same thing for the blog theme that we have. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need a, a video slash article on how to build something like this. Yes, and I wanted to do it with a new one, actually. The, um, the application, the mobile application one. Uh, we can do it with this one. Yeah, I need to do this video. And I said I will set up a meeting to, to do it live and uh, and show you how to do it. It might be, be better to have an article so that people can uh, can do it like, yeah, creating. Um, what else? So no demo, I don't have any demos on my side. Uh, as my side, um, the only thing I did was a Docker and um, perf issues. Um, Docker it just works. Still the same thing. Maybe we broke the the publication, but we have it on Docker Hub slash. Want to try it? Oh, someone made an an orchard CMS. Maybe nothing to do. But we have a CMS dash Linux and CMS dash Windows, and they are very fast. So that's good. You can try it. Um, I know some. Yeah, that's it. I think that's about it. Do you have any questions or other topics? Where is my window here? Um, so for my testing stuff, uh, for this GraphQL, um, I was using some stuff from the MVC, um, project. Mm -hmm. Do you think they push out some of the test host stuff that they've done, um, within their functional testing to NuGet packages? They have done something recently for testing, like in the past two or three months. I'm not sure they released it. Is that do you know something that is new that you use, or is it something an old thing like the test web host? I because it is something completely new for testing MC apps. I use I test server. Um, I, I don't know. It's in the it's in the the namespace is Microsoft ASP.NET Core. Yeah, but uh, is it MVC something new? Tests. Is it something recent or old? I don't know. Um, I mean, it works really nicely, um, and it's all in memory. I think that's the old one. I think they need something new. Could you could you ask for me? Yep. Um, if I send you the class name, ask if that's the old stuff or the new stuff? I will ask Javier what the new stuff is. Yeah, ask him what the new stuff is then. Yep, I will. I know even Folder likes it, so it must be good. Um, okay. That's it. working on the res and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, other questions? Then see you on Thursday. <laughs>